hello, hello, hello. Good morning. No, we can do better than that. Good morning. All right, let's all stand. <clears throat> We've got some uh, serious th praying to do right now. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for your forgiveness in, in our sins this, this week. Well, Father God, you are gracious and you're merciful and you forget and cast them into the sea. As far as the east is from the west, and Father God, that means we have a clean slate. So we can come into your house this morning, and we can come to your throne room, and we can t ask whatever we will, Father God, and according to your word, you shall do it for us. Father God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you, Father God, that you poured out your heart upon us. We thank you, Father God, that you gave your son that made a way back to you, Father. We thank you, Father God, for the Holy Ghost that leads us into the all truth. We thank you, Father God, for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, we just ask that the Holy Spirit would help us and lead us into the will uh, uh, of your heart's desire this morning, that you would speak through uh, each one of us, Father God, to those that need a word, a hug, that needs a, a prophetic word, that needs a touch, that needs a, a hope again, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that our hearts would be uh, softened unto the word, Father God, that we would be hearers of the word, but Father God, more importantly, we would be doers of the word. Father God, we ask as we sing and praise uh, uh, your name this morning, Father God, that you would help us to break through the barriers, Father God, and, and, and get to the upper levels, Father God, <clears throat> and enjoy the presence of the, the God that is God of all. We thank you, Father God. We praise you. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Y'all ready? Yeah. Come on, hit it. <clears throat> all right, let's go. I know we got a small crowd this morning. But that means all the heathens are not here, right? All right. <clears throat> Let's go.
break down the walls, push back the door, light up the world, moving the heart. There's a stirring in the spirit, divine, something holy. Break down the walls, push back the door, the light of the world, move in our hearts. There's a stirring in the spirit, divine, something holy in the feeling, divine. Let your glory and your power, let your majesty and word flood the earth, flood the earth. Let all rumors of your kingdom, let your name without reason flood the earth, flood the earth. Break down the walls, push back the door, the light of the world, move in our hearts, heaven. Flood the earth. Come on, say that again, break down. So break down the walls, push back the door, the light of the world, move in our hearts, heaven. Flood the earth. Do it again, break down. Down the walls, push back the tar, light of the world, moving our arms and flood the earth. Break down the walls. So break down the walls, push back the tar, 
Last week, the Lord really ministered to our hearts. I know he did mine, and I think we had an encounter with the Spirit of God that was fresh, and it was new for us. And I just feel like there's some distractions right now in the house, and, I'm, and I just want us to stop ministering. I want us to stop moving around, and we're going to sing this again right here. And I want us to refocus and value him and value his presence. The one awesome thing about the presence of God, it's not supposed to be fading, and it's never supposed to be just a one-time thing. We can enter into the fullness of his presence, and there's anointing on this song right here for us to enter in. And I do believe that there's freedom and there's healing. Um, I've already, I've been in so much pain this morning, and I really, my pain is just gone right now, which is crazy. I mean, I've been in a, a tremendous amount of pain today. So there's an anointing here. So if you, if, have, if you have sickness or any kind of pain or anything, I want you to enter in. Um, and if you want prayer and agreement, just come, come get me, and I'll pray and agree with you. Amen. Spirit of God, we just love you. We just remove everything that may pull our attention away right now. We set our hearts and our mind and our eyes on you. We fix them on you, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, just to come and, and just to kiss us afresh and anew with your presence, that you would awaken our hearts to your love, that you would awaken us to the depths of your affection for us. And as you do, Father God, we just declare healing. We declare miracles and breakthroughs in the lives and the hearts of your people, God. We thank you that you are here with us because you love us. And so, Father, we say again today, we value you. We value your presence. And we choose to run back to that spot and fall down at your feet and say, you're the answer. You're the one that I need. You're greater than all. And we love you. Thank you, Jesus.
you to bow your heads and I want you to allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you right now. And I want you to hear what he has to say for whoever you're holding hands with. And then I want you to pray for that person. Sing the next chorus, baby. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Allow. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we give you all honor and all glory this morning. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be in your presence. Now, Father God, as we have heard your voice this morning, we pray for our brothers, our sisters in Christ. We say amen, so be it, be done in their life, Father God. Bring forth the answers, Father God. Bring forth uh, uh, the need. And Father, we just ask for your blessing. In Jesus' name and all God's people said... Amen and amen. Hug your neighbor. Squeeze them tight. Tell them you're glad they're here this morning, that you get to see them, that you get to touch them. You get to, that sounds kind of perverted, but anyway, you get to, to enjoy their presence this morning. Amen. Enjoy their presence by enjoying the presence of the Holy Ghost. God is good. Amen. Oh, come on. He's better than that. There you go, there you go, there you go. Ushers, if you could come forward. That's heavy. That's heavy, 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 heavy. And y'all standing there all. Deacon Stately. <laughs> All right. Did you bless the offering? No. Bless it. Wait until they're getting situated. <laughs> Let's bow our heads one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this offering. Thank you for the ability to give. Father God, thank you for all the blessings that you pour upon us. You only ask for 10% back. And it's really not because you need the money. It's because you want us to be obedient. It redeems the rest of the money, Father God. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, just a couple things. I'm going to give announcements whether they're taking up the offering. Pass it on. Pass huh? it on. Take it. Pass it. There you go. <laughs> there. Uh, they're having a youth lunch after service today. So those of you who are youths, you all know what to do. Oh, it's canceled? Oh, my God. Y'all are killing me. Are you serious? You're killing me. You're killing me. You're killing me. You and your extra asterisk. I'm just saying. Okay, we'll, t- we'll talk later. It's canceled. <laughs> just teasing. Um, next week, Pastor Dennis is going to be here from South Africa. Yay! So super excited about that. Um, they're going to be taking a trip to the uh, pumpkin patch at Robinson Farms. And if you're an adult and you want to go, you're more than welcome to go. Anyways, it's $8 a ticket for all the activities and everything that's there. So an email will go out today for the forms to sign up and all that stuff. So um, let me know uh, or just respond to that, and then we'll, that's going to be on the 19th. So uh, we'll get that going. So blah, blah. And then what? It's fine. It's fine. Yes. Thank you. Okay. My son's back. Amen. Okay. So uh, just so I know we started this again. We used to do this thing with Destiny Discovery, and uh, basically because we have a crap ton of home studies. So we are now, g- there'll be a monthly home study that's put out there. Did y'all see the board that Lindell and Heather did? It's so pretty. They're so awesome. I know. It's very good. And they didn't even ask for reimbursement. 
for stuff. So I even bless them even more for that. So anyways, in that little tin thing there, there is this month's uh, Bible study is Watchmen on the Walls. So if you want, it's a home study, so you take it home, you do it. If you want credit for it, all you have to do is once you complete it, you give it to me and I'll give it right back to you. I just, it's just, I just make sure you, you, you did it, like you did something. You know what I mean? I'm not, it's not like you're going to get an A or an F or anything like that. Because this is just about you getting into um, Bible study with the Lord. So anyways, Watchmen on the Walls is back there. So if you want to take that, and the next month we'll have another one. And then, of course, Vivian and Fred are going to be here on the 20th. I'm so excited. <laughs> So last week, right? So last week, you know, I was, God, I was messed up last week, guys. You don't even know. So um, anyways, I got, I got done with service, and I went into my car, and my messenger was dinging, and it was Vivian. And she's, they were, because they're traveling, they're going all over the place. And she's like, we weren't at home, so we had church with you guys this morning. So she was watching with us. I'm like, the fact that you were watching this morning made everything even better. So um, her and Fred are on their way. So just be praying about travel, weather. Um, mostly about when they go back. There's supposed to be like a big snowstorm going into Colorado, and that's concerning. So if we could just pray that the roads won't get icy and there won't be a bad blizzard or anything like that on their way home, that they can make it. Um, so just keep praying about the weather. She's real excited. She has a word for the church, and she has a word for us, and I'm so excited. I can't even take it. I told her I don't know if I could share her. I really don't know if I can share her. I'm going to try. I think that's it. Look at you sitting there like you're ready for me to be done. Anyways, oh, pastor appreciation. That's what she's here for. She's here for pastor appreciation. Did you, if, if you did not get the email last week, that means you're not on our list and you need to be on our list. So let me know if you didn't get the email so we can get your email added. There's a sign-up sheet for the potluck. Um, the church is doing all the bread and all the tea. So if you can sign up for the potluck. So what, basically what we're going to do is we're going to come in, have worship. Vivian's going to preach, and then we're going to eat. And we eat good when we eat here. Amen. So um, if you didn't get it, let me know and sign up for that. And I think that's, that's it. Honey bite. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, I think most of us know what you're supposed to bring. We tell you you're supposed to bring it because you know that we like it and we eat it. And don't bring, if you have a family of six, don't bring enough food for two. I love you. I bless you with those words. Amen. You're going to make for enough for everybody to eat, ain't it? <laughs> There's me laying it down, boosh, like it's supposed to be. Okay. Y'all give my husband a big old hand. He's going to preach this morning. Isn't he cute? He's been working so hard. I love you. I love you, too. Are we having a meeting tonight? Uh, no. No. Yes. <laughs> I'm so freaking tired. I don't want to go to a meeting. Amen. <laughs> we have so many people out, and... Uh, Really, we need to move into the different sections uh, for the meetings, uh, dividing everything up. So this week, I'm going to send you communication uh, where I'd like you to help. If you uh, have an area that you would like to help, uh, I would like you to communicate that to me. But we have started the greeters. We needed to work on the deacons and the uh, uh, helps ministry uh, and, and forming that team. Uh, we need evangelical. Uh, that's in the streets. Uh, going uh, around and ministering in this area, and also pastoral, uh, uh, and just different different areas that we need help on, and we're going to start meeting uh, individually on those. So if you, will, uh, if you would, please, like I have said, and like we teach here, everybody is placed by God into a church, and everybody is a member, and everybody has a purpose. Everybody hold their thumb up. Okay. Does everybody use their thumb? Yes. Yes. If you lost your thumb, would it be, would you be able to do, okay, you can't put them down. Would you be able to do things? Yes, you could, but it would be more difficult, right? All right. It's the same way in the church. You each are vital to the, pro, to the, to the functioning of the church, right? And you're, you're needed. You're, you are, are, uh, uh, valued uh and you are important amen i want uh, i feel like uh the lady from the help uh show when, you know when she was talking to the little girl you were you was kind you was impotent right all right so turn to your neighbor and say you have something to do you are valuable but you need a mint 
Come on, loosen up. All right. All right. If your neighbor is stiff and is kind of just not ha- is kind of half awake, reach over and pinch them right now for me. Okay, turn with me to uh, Psalms chapter 68. 68. Psalm 68. Y'all ready? Well, the lady doing the screen's not, so y'all pray for her. Is that Psalm 68? Starting in the first one, we're going through the whole thing. We're going to read the whole Bible from here. Y'all ready? Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Are we talking about this morning, the presence of God? Wasn't this awesome? Okay, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He Brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in dry land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when, you're mar- when, you, when, you, when you marched through the wilderness, Selah. The earth is shook, the heavens also dropped rain as the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You are a God, you, God, sent a plentiful rain whereby you confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation dwelt in it. You, O God, provided from your goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee. They flee, and she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheepfold, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. Let's stop right there. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, just open, uh, Father, just what you've laid on my heart, let me express it properly. In Jesus' name, amen. Let them hear uh, uh, properly as well. Uh, Amen. So go back to verse 1 for me, please. Okay. Anybody hot? No? Okay. If you're hot, uh, fan yourself. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let those also who hate them flee before him. Amen. That's good scripture, right? But uh, when we read that scripture, what what do we think? We think of, okay, let's sit and look, when's God arising? Right? Okay, we're in trouble, we have issues, we're praying, we're waiting for God to arise on the situation, right? Right? We're, uh, we're waiting for him to come in. There's, uh, uh, there's a sickness. There's a, uh, someone needs to be healed. Uh, someone, we need God to move on the situation. So let God arise and the enemies be scattered. So we're sitting here waiting and, 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 and asking and waiting for him to arise on the situation. Right? We want him to move. Amen? We want him to do something because our situation is bad. Right? Well, uh, keep that in mind. I want, I want to, I was looking at some things and (laughs) 56 of all Americans believe the Holy Spirit is a force, but not a person. Three out of four Christians seldom have a spiritual conversation with anyone. Thirty-four percent of Americans do not believe in the virgin birth. To 
22% of American men and 33% of American women said they depend on Jesus Christ to overcome sin. 13% of Americans agree that Muhammad was only a prophet, even though Muslims compri comprise only of 1% of the U.S. population. Read into that what you want. 52% of all Christians believe that non-Christian faith can lead to eternal life. 52% of all Christians believe that non-Christian faith can lead to eternal life. More than half of all young people don't believe the Bible is God's inspired word. Somebody help that baby. He sounds like he's getting beat. Almost half of, of all faith sharers never share their story of how they come to Christ. Just go pull up statistics. How many can, of us can say and see that things are turning? Do you know that what's the fastest growing religion? Islam. Do you know the increase of sex in teenagers is the, the it's phenomenal how that's grown. Do you know I, do you know that in New York there is more babies killed than they are born? You can go in and you can look at all these numbers and they're staggering, right? You see all these things changing. You look at, you look at life and you go, go through life and you just look. And if you are 40 years or older, how many have noticed the changes in life? Kids that are 20, maybe 30, but 20 at least and below, you don't have a clue of what used to be and especially of moral right and wrong. Just, just the in right and wrong situations. It, it's amazing how uh, uh, this nation has gone. For, I mean, how many watch as, have you, have you ever gone into a public place? Let's say you're going to, to, to uh, get on a plane or you're going to go on a bus or you're going into a, a, a big uh, 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 public area. Watch anyone 30 or younger I rarely if ever see a young man that age open the door for a woman rarely and going into uh, and going into into a door young people will go right in front of older people and cut them off right How many has seen the increase of people going off on other people, just unleashing obs obscenities at them? The increase of all of these things in America alone is astonishing. And right now, we have uh, a president that people call racist that hate and then there's other people that think he's awesome and why do they think he's awesome because the economy is going great and things are uh, we have jobs and and we're we're blessed and we have all these things and we're attributing to a republican uh uh uh, uh president which has nothing to do with it it is god amen but in that whole situation we uh we we're not worried about things. See, when, when there's wars going on and there's, there's the potential of death, there's a potential, potential of something going on, uh, then uh, everybody is turned towards God. But when it is blessed and things are going good and it's all right, we think, okay, as long as we've got money in our pockets, what I'm trying to say. When, when, when the planes went into the, the, to, to the buildings in New York, uh, the next day the flags that were raised were everywhere and the churches were full. That next Sunday. Why? Because in the time of trouble, the time of despair, 
we're going back to what we used to know. And what we know is right. But there's coming and there is when this generation is not turning to him. They're turning to self to fulfill that need. Amen? They're turning to self to fill that need. And in that, they are consumed with self. That, that you look at the, the statistics and, and, and the new generation, they are, everything is focused on themselves and self-gratification. How can I be pleased? How can I do? And, and everything, every, all of them believe, as you look at the statistics, all of them believe that they are owed. Nothing should they have to work for. It should be given to them, right? And so as you're looking at all that, what do we need? We need God to arise, right? We need God to come up. We need God to rise up. And as we're changing our heart's desires, this ministry, we have a call, and we're, we are to be the point of, this, of the spear, and we're supposed to break through to allow the kingdom to come, that we would become sons and daughters of the Most High, that we would operate in those and not just come to church and, and get our feel good, not just come to church and praise and worship, a small, uh, a cry, snot, ball, whatever, uh, prophesy to one another, uh, lay hands on one another, and do that all here, and then go back out into the world and do our everyday thing just like it was normal. That's not what this church is about. We are called to equip everybody in this place to take it out there. And what we need is God to arise. We need God to arise in the public place. We need God to arise in the school. We need God to arise in our workplace. We, are, we have so many people trying to get out of a job and get out of a place where they're at because it's so sinful. Well, that's why you're there. That's why God sent you there. He sent you there to make a difference. He sent you to let God arise in you in that situation and bring forth. And we all want to, uh, we all want to bring religion to it. We don't need religion. We don't need religion. Okay, uh, you know, this, I don't have numbers for this, but it's amazing to me how uh, all of us, we, we get into this thing either or. All right, you come into church and you feel all of this religion, rules, do's, and don'ts. Right? You go to those churches and you feel like that. And then there's other churches that they, they don't even preach about do's and don'ts. It's just about feel good. Right? But you have the Bible and you can start, if you read anything, with some of these numbers about reading the Bible... 60% never, seldom, ever read the Word of God. What's crazy is 60% pray weekly. Daily. No, daily. It was daily. Okay. If you pray daily and you don't read, how you know you're getting the answer? That's crazy, isn't it? So, I lost the train of thought. <laughs> so, we have all this stuff. This church is called to go into those places and let God arise in a situation. But, uh, how are we doing that if we just go and do the same thing as they do it? And what, where, this is where I was going. We get into this do or don't and this religious thing and, and, and then it confines us. We're, whether we are doing the right thing or we're doing the wrong thing. And uh, I was thinking about this yesterday. Because me and my wife, never mind, I won't, I won't say that. Uh, uh, God touches you when you're in a situation to bring him into the situation, right? And when you're here, our, our heart's desire is to prepare you for that situation. So when you go into the workplace and there's someone that is sick, that you have the answer by praying and believing that they will be made whole, right? 
when someone's marriage is messed up, that you have the counsel to help them get into and bring their, 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 their marriage and making it whole. Right? When, when their financial situation is messed up, that you're bringing the answer to them for that. That's what God has called us to do, that we are the answer. Right? We are a part of his body. So we are little Christ. We are little Jesus, right? We're, we're to go into the area and bring Jesus to those situations, right? But it's a do or don't. It's just, we come here, we have a religious thing, and we go out and we live our normal life, and we put Jesus on it, and we don't operate in, in his word. We go out and we listen to the dirty jokes and we laugh. We, we, we're, 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 we're greedy. We, we, do, we act all of these things and then we come here and we have some guilt and it eats us up. And then we fight that thing and then we get mad at the preacher because he preaches something about that's fighting on, uh, that, that we're fighting with and we have this, 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 this fight, this inner, inner turmoil. And this what I need to do, what I need to change, and, and what we've experienced as pastors, and they've experienced as pastors, is that internal fight then gets projected on us because we're bringing the answer, right? Uh, and then so they, they refocus the issue on us so they don't have to deal with them. But why are we focused on the do's and the don't? Jesus is not focused on the do's and the don't. He's focused on relationship. In the relationship, if you focus on the relationship, then it takes away the do's and the don'ts because you know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Here's a, a great example, okay? And, 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 and where you're on this stance, I, I really don't care. And I don't mean that ugly, but... It doesn't matter. You got to work it out, okay? But I don't believe there's anything wrong with having a beer, okay? So we have a barbecue. We have uh, 30 of us, 30 families come to this barbecue, all right? Now, we won't have beer at that barbecue because it's a church thing. And we have this religious thing about it. Oh, no, we can't do it, okay? All right, that, some people... All right, and we could take the stance that some people it would affect and it would offend and it would hurt their faith, so we don't do it protected. If we made that decision for that reason, then we would be operating in what God's word tells us to do. But we don't do that. We do it because we are, are hypocritical. Right? So what happens is we have the church party and everybody's in pretense. Then they have the separate party with the few of them that want, really want to. And what happens is they go over there and they have a few drinks, and then they have a few more drinks, and they have a few more drinks, and they have a few more drinks. They have too many drinks. Right? Okay. So this is the thing. This is the typical thing is this: we fight and go through this whole situation. As we do that and we keep it separate, what happens is, is that then all of a sudden someone's wife starts becoming attracted to the wrong person. They start doing the wrong things, right? They then get loose and start talking about other people and tearing people down, right? So the thing is, is the alcohol the issue or is it the heart, right? See, if you are connected with Jesus and Jesus is in you, then he's speaking to you and in any situation... You are bringing God to the party. He's there already. You just either you acknowledge he's there or you're not acknowledging and trying to avoid that he is there. Right? So you will get inebriated enough that you won't hear that still small voice and you will ignore it and then do what your flesh wants to do. Right? Whatever that is. But all of it comes from the fighting of the right and wrong. Because we don't know what we believe. 
Because if we had a word from God and we were trusting in him, whatever that word was, we would have no problem with it. In other words, if we had a word, you are not to drink, then we could go to the party over here and not drink and have a great time. And then I find the opportunity when the one that is having too much that we can sneak in, allow the Holy Ghost to use us to guard our brother, keep him from sinning, redirect him into the place that he wants to go. And he's going to be sovereign. He's going to be crying. He's going to be primed to hear the good news anyway. But we didn't go to the, pro- we didn't go to the party because that we're going to be in sin. Because... We are fighting whether we can drink or not. And that's what we're focused on instead of what God wants us to do. Okay, I'm the other person over here. I'm the other person. God said I could drink. So I go to the party and I have a few. But because I am not sure of my word, I find myself in sin and drink too much. Because I'm not spending and allowing him just enough time with me, and I'm not confident in my word. So when I go over here, whoever's watching me, I'm I'm not sure of my stance. So I can't operate in God. Now, that's just the alcohol situation. I'm talking about in all situations. In all situations, we need to allow God to arise that we may operate in him that we may bring God to the situation, that we may let him arise and be lifted up, that all men may be drawn to him. Amen? Amen? We need God to come into our hearts. We need God to fill us up. And then in that, then we can move and do what God's called us to do. See, if we're over here at this party, and even if we've had a couple, if we're sure who we are, we're sure of our relationship, if there's a situation we still should be able to move in the Holy Ghost. You know what I've noticed is that there's people that can't move in it, but when we come to church and they don't have any guilt, they can move and hear God's voice. They can lay hands on it and people will be made whole. They can do all of that. But when they're out there, they get bound. And let's, say, let's take alcohol out of the situation. Let's just say in a particular event that we go to this place, we're not spending enough time here every day reading, praying, so when we come to this situation, we're bound and unable to do what God's called us to do. But when it's Sunday morning, we got to prepare for Sunday morning. We get all in our, we get in the right groove. We, we listen to Christian music, getting ready. So, Saturday night, we, we pray a little bit. We, uh, especially as ministers, we, we prepare, our Sunday school teachers, we prepare for the word. And in that 24-hour period, we're locked in with Jesus. And so then when we come to church, then everything flows. God moves. It's a touch. All of that's moving. That's great. But that's not, that, this is just preparation. This is just school. This is right the area that he's trying to send us. This is where he's trying to take us to. This is where he wants us to deliver his word and let God arise in the situation. But we're too caught up in what people think. We're too caught up in, 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 in religion instead of relationship. See, I would never drink around here because I was concerned I was going to cause somebody to stumble. But what is crazy is everybody around here knows that I preach this way and talk this way because I've said it in, in, in kind of in different a- avenues, and people were stumbling anyway. Why? Because they aren't sure of who they are in Christ. They do not have the relationship that they need to have. And what we need to do is we need to focus on that. Now, as we have talked about, we are regrouping. We, we've, had the, we've had the split. We've had the, 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 uh, the crushing and, the, and my self-pity and all of that stuff. And now God's calling us to get back to where we're called, get back to what we're supposed to do, individually and collectively as a church. We're supposed to start heading back towards where we are, are called to be. 
part of that is for us to understand and know who we are and understand and know what we're called to do and get back into the practices that gets us into that relationship so we know yes or no. So we know when to go and when to stay, when to give and not to give. So we know how we are to operate in every situation. Because if you're not talking to him every morning, every afternoon, and every evening, and you're not pr reading and, do and getting word back, you're not in connection with God. There's no relationship. All you are is having an occasional date. And he doesn't want an occasional date. He wants a relationship covenant daily. My wife doesn't want me to come in once a month and, uh, and have relations and then leave. Now, there's some certain situations where people work and all of that that fall, falls into it. But even in that, they come to that agreement and they do their best to stay connected, especially now that we have me, uh, uh, devices that we can stay connected. But uh, in that, there, there's got to be some connection. If not, and they're both not willing, it's going to fall apart, right? Because you're never together. But a as a, a covenant partner, my wife and I, we desire and need to be with each other. If we're not wanting to be with each other, something's wrong. Amen? Something's wrong with a relationship. Something is messed up. Why don't we want to be with or, and all that? And so that's the same thing with God. Why are we not wanting to be with him? There's something wrong. Is it because he's ugly? Is it because he's too fat? Is it because he talks too much? Is it because he lies? Is it because he doesn't give us what we want, what we need? What's the reason why? And in most marriages, what's the reason why? There's an insecurity in us, and we can't give to our partner what we are lacking in ourselves, right? And so that's what's the same thing with our partner in Jesus Christ, is that there's something lacking in us, so we cannot give to him to receive from him what he need, wants to give us to for, enable us to be what we're called to be, right? And so in that, we don't spend the time because we're afraid to be with him. See, when you get married and y'all both have the young bodies, and everything's nice, but then when you start getting older and everything starts sagging and you start getting <laughs> bigger and you start, you know, you get start missing teeth and all that, you don't feel you don't you don't feel as sexy as you used to be, right? And so you have a heart, it's like before you would have the lights on and the, the windows open and and, and and you didn't care when, where, or how. Now it's gotta be dark and it's gotta be pitch black, and you gotta make sure that nobody sees anything. Right? But you're so white because you're afraid to go outside, you got to glow in the room anyway. Especially if you roll over and your butt's sticking up in the air. Amen? <clears throat> we don't, we, we're so ashamed of who we are, we're scared to be with him. We're still Adam and Eve in the garden cutting out leaves and trying to fit it over parts so he doesn't see. And he's intimate with us. He made us. He's got Superman x-ray vision. He can see past the leaves. Amen? And so exactly get naked as we used to preach and, and talk about in, in, in praise and worship. Get it off. Stop worrying about it and come to the Father. He doesn't care if you got the big zit on your rear end. He doesn't care if you're sagging. He doesn't care if you got the wrong stuff. He doesn't care if you're messed up. He doesn't care if you're slow. He doesn't care. It, whatever the situation is, he loves you. And in that, that relationship, in that, allows God to arise in the situation that we're crying out for God to arise in. If we need, if, if, you know, the, and this is the other thing, we focus on our needs. But uh, what, what about our neighbor's needs? When you start focusing on your neighbor's needs, you have moved past selfishness and you've moved into a place where, where, where God wants, you know, and like, I, I don't care about me. You know, when, when I'm going to, 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 to look for someone, then I'm not worried about what my sin is, right? Like when I go to God about somebody else, Lord, I don't know what, and we don't know what's in their lives. And we're like, I, Lord, you know what's in their lives or anything that could be pro 
preventing them to come. But Father, I, I just, I, the Lord, they are on my heart. I don't know why. I don't know why I like them. I don't know why. The, I, don't, I don't like the way he talks. I don't like what he says. I don't like the way she looks. I, whatever the situation is, there's things about them that you don't like, but there's something about in them that, that you do like and, and, and it's causing you to go to God for them. And all of their messed up stuff doesn't keep you from asking for them. Why? Because you let it go. Now, I know there's a whole bunch of people in here that you go and you look at other people and, and you have all of these things against them and, 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 you, and, and you don't want them to get blessed because you are jealous of them. And I know those things are going, going on, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about us on a reality basis where, where the ones that you do like, you know, it may be just your kids. Some of us don't like our kids. Can I get a witness? But whoever, your wife, your husband, whoever it is, you look past their mistakes and you want God to bless them. And God wants you to do the same thing for you. But God wants you to move to the place where you're not just going to him for you, but for everybody. Because he wants you to be the one that stands in the gap. He wants you to be the one. You know, Abraham, if he had said, if there was just one. Because in Jeremiah, he says, if, one, if, if, if there's just one that would stand up. Right? So God's just looking for one that will stand up in the gap. And he doesn't want you to get focused on the issues. He doesn't want to get you. Hey, look, he's going to clean you up. He'll handle the cleaning up. He just wants you to let go of everything else and spend that time with him and be with him. So when you're with him, you can be filled up with him. And so when you go, it's like being plugged up with uh, all the power, you're charged completely up. So when you go and touch, it's going to cause that thing to move. So when you come all fully charged to the job and someone walks in and they are throwing up and they are sick as a dog, you can lay hands on them. And they may be whole. How many of you know that if, that, if they're really sick, re, you know, and not just trying to get out of work, if they're really sick and you do that and they are made whole, that's worth 10,000 words of trying to tell them how much Jesus loves them. If you come in and God has been, you've been spending time with God and God says, hey, the, the uh, uh, Cindy, Cindy Lopper, whatever her name is, in your in your in your job uh, uh, when she was 12 she was molested and it was her uncle and uh, what I need you to do is I need you to go and I need you to tell her that I was there and that I love her and that I'm going to protect her and uh, all of these things and when you come in and you tell her Cindy that you're going to rock her world right because he's not only going to tell you what to say he's going to tell you how to say it and as you move in and you deliver those words to them, it's a lot better than Jesus loves you and come to my church. You don't have to ask them to your church when you deliver the word of God. They're going to follow you. Hey, I, I've been hearing the, this preacher and this person talk about his church and his I'm not sure, but you got something different. When I'm in your presence, I feel different. When, when I get around you, I feel when you've told me things nobody knows. I only, it was only in my closet. You identify with me. You're not trying to do my rights and my wrongs. You're trying to bring me something that's going to make my life better. That's letting God arise. When God comes into your situation, did he come in pointing the finger at you and telling you everything that was wrong? No. When you were right here, when you finally got to church and God was talking, everything that was being said, you felt the love of God coming towards you, right? Well, that's what God's wanting you to do. It's to come in that situation and bring the love of God to that person. Bring the answer to that person. And when you do that and you bring that love to them, then that's going to make a difference. Not because, oh, you can't be doing that. Oh, you're a lesbian. Oh, you're, you're, you're sleeping with him. Oh, you're doing... They know their stuff is wrong. They don't need to hear it from you. 
They need to hear you bringing the love of God, and the, you, they need to hear the answer to their problem. And we're looking, go back to what? We're looking, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. We're coming in, and we're finding out the issue, and we're going, crying out to God. God, arise in their situation. Help them. Fix it. And they need $100 today. And you have $100. And God, God, God bring them the money. Let, let their mom or dad bring them the money they need. <laughs> let their rich uncle bring them the money they need. They've been telling me about a rich uncle. Lord, let the rich uncle bring the $100. Right? And you got $100 in your pocket. But that's going to go to your golf game trip with your, with your partner. And then the other 50 that's hidden away that your wife doesn't know way about, that's to buy the beer. Right? Amen? We're waiting for God to arise in a situation, and he's waiting for us to get off our rear end. He said, these things I've done, these things you'll do greater. Why don't we believe the word of God? Do you know that 60% don't believe the word's literal? I guess it's supposed to be a fairy tale. I don't know. But then they believe, 60% believe there's a God. Uh, huh? <laughs> Let God arise. When, when you go to start praying for somebody and you believe in God to do something in their life, if you're, well, 60% 60, 60 are praying daily, so you've got to be praying. Well, it's probably all me, me, me. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, 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 I need that. I need. But the, the 2% that you're praying for somebody else, you're looking for God to arise in this situation, and he's saying, I've empowered you. I've given you the gifts of the Holy Ghost. He will lead you in all truth. Because this is the thing. This is leading you into all truth. Miss so-and-so at her job, at your job, she needs the $100. The Holy Spirit's going to lead you in, if you've got the $100, whether to give it to her. Sometimes you are to give it to her. Sometimes you don't know that she has a cocaine habit and she's been... And you are not to give her the hundred dollars, but you're to go help her with her finances and spend time with her to find out that she's got a coke habit and then get into her life that helps help her walk out of that coke habit. And only the Holy Ghost is going to know that because every one of our friends has got a whole bunch of skeletons in their closet. You just haven't found it. Every once in a while, the closet will open up and you'll see a little dry bone, a foot or a knee or something, and you'll say, what? What's going on there? But then that door's closed real quick. You're not seeing the whole thing, all right? All of us have got those things. But when we spend time with and we allow the love of Christ to be shared to someone, with someone else, then we then open that door over so slowly, and then we see all the skeletons, and then we go, oh, my God, they're just as bad as us. But then, God, how can I help? Instead of how can I judge? And so many of us have been put in a situation where we've come home with people, we've been allowed to see the dirty laundry, and we judged instead of brought the help that they needed. Amen? Some of the hardest things in my life that caused the most heartache in my life was that I was brought in a situation and I saw dirty laundry because I saw dirty laundry, I got accused. Because I got, I, I saw the skid marks. Those hurt. But you know what hurt the most? Was those that saw my dirty laundry. Instead of standing beside me, judged me. And criticized me. And attacked me. God's putting you in, your, you in those positions that God will arise. And what is God? God is love. That love will arise and be the answer to the situation. Amen.
Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we give you all honor and all glory. <coughs> Father, I just ask that I want, I want everybody to bow your heads. I want you to I want you to take just a few minutes before we close. How many of you in here have been waiting for God to arise in you or in somebody else's situation? And you're crying out for God to move, but it just doesn't seem like he's moving. Maybe he's waiting for you to move. Maybe he's waiting for you to go and do. And how many in here are sitting near or have somebody in this church or close to your life that you know that they're praying and believing God and crying out for him to arise and you have the answer, you're just not doing it? Or you haven't even thought of doing it. You may be in agreement for God to fix it or help and have never thought I'm the one that's supposed to help. I'm not talking about us becoming God in someone's life. I'm talking about us being little God and little G in someone's life and listening to God Almighty, Holy Ghost, and do what he says. Is there anybody in here that needs prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up this man right now. We ask for you, God, for you to touch him, help him to be empowered. Let God arise in this situation. Let the person that's supposed to help come. If it's him, let him do it. Father, we just ask that you be blessed and that, Father God, that the answer be revealed to him, Father God, and that he opens up and allows you to do it through him and are through them, Father God. Just, we just speak to that situation right now. Whatever the answer is, Father God, for whoever's supposed to bring it, whoever's supposed to be the answer, whoever's supposed to, to bring walk into that room, Father God, we ask for them to move now and to put down all insecurities. We thank you for it. Now, Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus that everyone in here would let God arise in themselves, that they would stop hiding with, with leaves, to Father God, and come naked before you, Father God, and cry out and say, I am a sinner, but you have forgiven me, and we receive your forgiveness. Now make me whole. Let me spend time with you. Let me learn you. Let me know you, Father God, and let me be the one that you cleanse my lips and send me into the situation, Father God. And all God's people said, yeah. amen. Shake hands, hug next. Don't get mixed up. We'll see you Wednesday. Bring a friend, bring an enemy, bring somebody. Chairs, lights, please. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. Thank you.